Hi friends, uh, I'm Chris Mick and I'd like to talk about a recording we did within the last month and it was the option to do it totally analog. There's many discussions about analog recording versus, versus digital, but who records analog anymore? You need something like Studer tape machines, uh, an analog uh, mixing board, maybe an EMT 140 to do uh, some reverb, or uh, maybe a tape delay by Roland. And we did that, and you see it in the video. This was our equipment. And uh, the idea was uh, to uh, record uh, everything mostly uh, within one take. And I took out my old uh, guitar, I studied uh, classical guitar about 40 years ago, forgot about it. And um, the first thing we realized when you were recording to tape, you really have to be very disciplined and you must play the instrument, must be capable of doing it in one take. Because it's very hard to do this punch in, punch out. Uh, there's also uh, always latency uh, with the Studer machines. And I really learned this is a hard job and I have the biggest respect for those people who did in the 60s, 70s, 80s and even before in the 50s these recordings. Listen to that. They were really capable of doing that. You know the first Beatle album was made in one day. You can read it with George Martin. He describes uh, how they did it. So we tried to do that in 2022 and 2023, that's right now. This is a Helmut Hanika handmade, handcrafted classical guitar and I uh, did not only use it uh, for uh, playing, I also used it for percussion in some of the tracks. And uh, the last track on the album, you can listen to that album, I write down there where you can listen to it, so you understand how we did it. Uh, was this uh, Yairi. Uh, it's a dreadnought guitar and uh, I only used that on the very last track uh, that's called Sad Little Boy. Supposed to be me when I was a little boy and nobody understood what this guy is doing there. Um, so uh, let's go through all this and I hope it will be very interesting to you. What happened there? How did they record it? Uh, what is the difference between this analog thing and what you might see in the video right now is uh, the equipment we used. There's this wall of compressors and everything and my goal was no compressors please, um, and no uh, digital effects. The only effects we used was this EMT reverb plate uh, and I think it was an AKG uh, uh, spring reverb also we used and this Roland tape echo uh, which is, was in mint condition it was really great to do that everything went to this Studer 904 uh, um, uh, desk uh, there's another video on YouTube you can see what what sort of mixer this is it's totally analog nothing in nothing total recall everything must have been made by tape uh, and we used the Studer 820 uh, um, for recording and uh, uh, use it uh, only eight tracks. Yes, uh, in the future we might uh, record on a J37. Specialists know what this means. It's the original Beatles Abbey Road machine, just for the fun of it and because we are capable to do use uh, this. So no discussion about uh, digital analog anymore. You can listen by yourself. And I just want to uh, pull you through some little songs we did here. Uh, and um, what we also used was a darbuka. I played a darbuka. And the, the darbuka was recorded by a Neumann U87, uh, which is quite unusual, but we found it's very intimate. The sound, you only have to be careful when they play that through uh, such a um, microphone. And of course we used Neumann mics, uh, condenser mics uh, for the classic guitar. And I have a TLM uh, 103 over here. It's not the most expensive of Neumann. Uh, the last track was done with that. But most important for, for the synth nerds here, I uh, uh, originally I thought we keep it totally analog so there is synthesizer voices in there in many tracks and we use the Oberheim OBX8 here. Yes, um, 
Th this is a really, really fantastic uh, uh, new made synthesizer, 8 voice, and uh, I used it. And there the hassle starts. We wanted to put it onto, on vinyl uh, uh, in the end by on an MCI machine, direct cut to, to vinyl. And uh, when you use a synthesizer uh, uh, for pulse wave, for example, you must be very careful because vinyl is very delicate uh, with such sounds, especially when it goes into the bass. So there were many things to think about, but the most important was it's a really, really hard musicianship to do something like that. So in the tracks you can listen on, on YouTube for free or Apple Music or Spotify, wherever. It's, it's Deezer, it's, it's all everywhere. It's Chris Mick, uh, Where I Came From, that's how we named the album. There you can listen to the tracks and make up your mind, is it worth to do something like that? And the hardest thing was, it's only me, only one person. Uh, when you use a DAW, like Nuendo I have here, or Pro Tools, you can do quantizing because the mistakes are summing up. If you play the guitar first, uh, then it's uh, uh, um, then comes uh, percussion, then the vocal. I did some vocals also. Uh, the mistakes, uh, uh, especially in the timing, they, they sum up, and in the end, it doesn't sound organic like do a band that's doing something like that. That was also a very high goal to to master this. Uh, I'm very uh, um, um, secure as it can, comes to metrum, uh, so that was uh, good that I could do that. Uh, but uh, in the end, you will hear s mistakes, and the mistakes must be in there. And we did n not use a click track. I sat down there, played the guitar, and from start to the end, one take, if there's a mistake in, all from the start again. <laughs> I promise you I only use two or maximum three takes uh, to do that. Yes? Uh, first track you, you, uh, that's interesting for you, that is the one where we used uh, uh, the Oberheim, only the classical guitar, my vocal, uh, and uh, um, the classical guitar also for percussion, which, which was quite nice. Listen to that. Uh, it, the track is called By Here. I've been writing some scientific work uh, about the Bossa times or uh, Musica Popular Brasilea. Uh, so I knew how to do something like that and I found the Oberheim mixes perfectly with a classical guitar and listen to the guitar how it sounds nearly no effect on that yes all other sounds the bass and strings and soloing comes from the Oberheim and my voice so uh, this is a perfect example for how you can only use classical guitar and an analog synth. Uh, very hard uh, as it comes to classical guitar was this track here. Um, this is not so easy to play. I had to play it several times uh, to keep it perfect. And uh, this is the case where it gets hybrid. You listen to this accordion harmonium uh, type of sound. This is coming, and to be honest, at a certain point we found we will use years to do it like the only analog. Um, I added uh, something uh, from Wire Omnisphere. Spectrosonics Omnisphere has got this beautiful so sounding natural instruments. Uh, and that's the, uh, the case here. So we mixed up the classic guitar uh, with that, yes. So you might listen to that. Uh, there are many other things uh, um, like this here. Um, this is a sort of old school um, finger picking stuff. Uh, there you hear, you hear in the beginning, I'm talking. Okay. Then it's running and I'm starting. Um, this is the Trillium bass, stand up bass. Uh, I could have called a friend to play the bass there. It's, it's easy, and this mandolin sound is also coming from Omnisphere, but the guitars are all made here with a classical guitar, this Hanika guitar. Um, the track I'm most proud of, and that was very hard to do, is this one. Um, so I got uh, um, wanted to have an orchestra or a string sound, and I really tried everything. Uh, in the end, uh, I ended up with Spitfire, uh, uh, which they have very nice 
strings and mix it up with Omnisphere orchestra strings. Uh, I could have also taken East West, but I mixed uh, three uh, uh, different plugins to make the string sound, and I played then this guitar, this Yairi, uh, and the vocal was made with this quite simple LKG 2000. And uh, the guitar was recorded by the And listen to that. This was uh, very nice and very emotional. And what I did was I played one take. I made the string far on the door, played it back, had it on the headphones. And then I take this for uh, uh, the vocal and this one for the guitar. Sang one part. So there's something in my brain, I don't know, some people can do that. Play guitar, soloing, like this dance is like you sing along with, with what you're playing. And this is a very personal expression. So uh, this is a track I'm I'm really proud of that, that this work. You, you must listen to that, even, even if you don't like the other tracks. So all in all, the experience was it's very hard uh, to do that. And uh, on the other hand, it was something I was really missing over all these decades. I've been teaching music technology and uh, uh, I know what's possible today. I didn't want to do or we did not want to do what's possible. We wanted to use this old equipment as far as we can get with it. And the whole thing was mastered uh, then and will be mastered on the Nagra. Um, so in, in the end uh, it's 80% uh, analog and, and uh, but we did not reach the goal to make it perfectly analog. So, so there was a conversion, a conversion using this Omnisphere thing. Uh, but uh, I really had time to think about how to mix it up uh, and in the end it's a very nice album That's what I think. It's totally atypical. It's not commercial. I, I give a damn on this commercial thing We wanted to do this old school. There's mistakes in so what you get is pure musicianship is Mostly analog like you will never hear today again because it's mastered on Nagra T audio you know what this means and the studer thinks who has this we have the ability to do this and um, I was very very uh, amazed hearing it by a via headphone also the classical guitar via the studer machine I don't get this sound if I go directly into the door so maybe interesting for you um, it's very unique um, you can write your comments down there, oh, you could have done, done the same, but I was forced to do it like this by the state machines, you know. It's totally different from uh, what I did in the last track, uh, Into the Door, there, there you could have uh, had the chance, do it again, do it again, punch in, punch out, quantize and all these things. So what you get is, is a piece of art. Sorry, it's a piece of art. And uh, uh, I don't care if somebody buys it or whatever, we had to do this. And uh, in the end, spread love, spread music, spread musicianship. Don't lie to the people, uh, don't do too many technical stuff uh, and take it to the core. So now we are planning to uh, bring some very young uh, artists into the studio and uh, do some productions with them and then I will tell you what we do there. This is a different thing. All everything you hear on this record uh, written down there is done by me. So um, if you have some constructive things or questions uh, write something down there or subscribe. Uh, there's a lot of videos you know it's 150 or something like that. I'm not a, a professional doing these videos. I just want to take it to the world and Maybe you enjoy it. Have a good time and see you next time.